A lot of people are afraid of psychics. And this week, I want to tell you the number one reason why and how to make sure you aren't the victim of this kind of psychic attack. Hi, I'm Corby Mitleid, and this is the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. The world is changing, and life doesn't have the spark it used to. So we look around and ask, where do I need to go to catch the magic again? You've found it. Welcome to the Psychic Yellow Brick Road, a weekly podcast that delves into the intuitive world, metaphysics, life purpose, and how to connect with the compassion of spirituality. I'm Corby Mitleid, and I've been on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road for 50 years. I'm a certified tarot master, past life specialist, psychic medium, channel, and author. And most importantly, I'm an elder in the field, ready to pass on everything I've discovered to you. So let's hit that Psychic Yellow Brick Road where you can find the real wizards and avoid the flying monkeys. Drive-by Psychic Shootings Today, my listeners, I want to talk to you about a real hot-button subject with me, and that's what I call drive-by psychic shootings. It's not literally a psychic gun, but it's when your boundaries are not respected by someone who thinks their ego trumps your privacy. Here's what my client Jerry asked me about recently. What do you do when a psychic comes up to you and insists that they have to tell you something or gives you a reading or makes a prediction that you didn't ask for? A psychic walked up to me at an expo, saying she could tell I was worried about my daughter and something terrible was going on with her I needed to know about. I was startled and upset, and frankly, I didn't want to hear that. My wife was having serious surgery in a week, and I was focused on her. The psychic insisted that the problem was with my child, not a vague, a woman in your life thing. And it turned out nothing unusual was going on with my daughter anyway so it was extra worry for nothing. How do you keep people from doing that? The truly professional spiritualists I've known, those that are part of a spiritual conclave like Lilydale, for instance, are trained to come up to you politely and say, excuse me, I'm Reverend so-and-so from Lilydale, and I believe I have a message for you. May I come to you? That's the formal request they're taught. And they wait for permission to continue. If you say no, it's no. No argument, no pressure. They nod and they walk away, trusting that spirit also doesn't think that you need the message they had at this particular time or that you'll get it in another form. On the other hand, because of what people see on fake reality shows, they believe that psychics walk up to perfect strangers filling up the cantaloupes at the local Wegman supermarket and intone, excuse me, your Aunt Sadie? She says you have a bald tire on your car in the back on the left, and if you don't get it fixed this week, you're going to die in an accident. Just telling you, and walk away. Trust me, that is not how reality shows for psychics work. Their PR team goes out and scouts every Wegman supermarket in a given area, decide which one will look best on camera, and then they get permission from that store to film. Then the team interviews a whole bunch of people and gets them to sign legal model releases. And then it's rehearsed six times. So is it spontaneous, my friends? Oh, no, not in the least. But because of that kind of reality show nonsense, some psychics feel that when they get an intuitive message for a stranger, it has to get through whether their target wants it or not. A psychic who demands your attention, saying they have a reading for you and you must listen to them or something dire will happen, sometimes even grabbing you by the arm or otherwise stopping you, is trampling on your free will and invading your personal space, inappropriately, inconsiderately, and unprofessionally. Anyone can feel poleaxed when this happens. It comes out of the blue, you're unprepared, And those fearful and negative thoughts can take root right away unless you stop them in their tracks. The correct response is to interrupt the message giver mid-sentence and say, Excuse me, but I did not ask for a reading and I do not want to hear what you have to say. If they keep pushing, raise your voice if you have to and say, I did not ask for a reading and I refuse your information and walk away. If they follow, you're being stalked and harassed 
and should handle it the same way you would in any harassment situation. Find someone in charge, report the person, and leave it for the authorities to handle. Look, it even happens psychic to psychic. It's not uncommon that at the end of a show day, I have a stiff neck and a headache from bending over my table and reading client after client for hours on end. I cannot tell you how often a chirpy healer who has no idea about personal boundaries comes up to me, hands raised and fingers splayed, and says, Oh, you have a headache. Here, let me fix it. I know Reiki. Sometimes it takes me two or three refusals, ending with a curt back off before they cease and desist. And often they get pouty and say, You're not very love and light, are you? At which point this no nonsense New York psychic says, Well, you didn't listen. Healers get into your energy. You have to be able to trust them. And after half a century of doing this work, I know better than to let someone whose energy I don't know from Adam's house cat get past my boundaries to go messing with my meridians. I view people reading across the table in the same fashion. Psychic abilities are still misunderstood in a lot of places, and people are scared that we read their minds as they walk by. A psychic who leans across the booth and says, your dead grandfather has a message for you, or there's a dangerous accident you can avoid, let me tell you about it, is trying to hook your emotions in order to get you to have a session with them. Don't fall for it. It's the reason why I refuse to intuitively focus on people outside my own office, wherever it is at the moment, private party, an expo, whatever. How would you feel if your partner said hello to her OBGYN doctor at a cocktail party and the next thing you knew, he was lifting her skirt and discussing a diagnosis. Pretty hellaciously upset because A, it's not appropriate and B, she didn't ask him to. So what's the takeaway from this week's pod bite? Simply this, having your privacy and free will honored is paramount if you're going to trust what I tell you in an intuitive session. And that goes for every single psychic you ever work with. If they consider their will more important than yours and cross your comfort boundaries, then leave. And you can even tell them that Corby told you to. I've been guiding friends and clients since 1973. I love showing you opportunities and how to grab them, where the tough stuff is and how to get through it, and handing you your toolbox through tarot and oracle cards, past life exploration, spirit guides and angelic conferences, and mediumship. My website, CorbyMitlai.com, is full of articles, blogs, where to find me for live appearances, and where to listen to me as I guest on other podcasts. There's a full menu of readings, from short burning questions all the way up to the jewel in the crown, my soul plan readings, which are based on the work I did with Robert Schwartz. Whether it's general questions about your life in practical terms, romance readings, business consultations, discovering your sentence of passion, or digging into that single challenge that has run through your life, you can find the appointment that's right for you. You know, your opinion matters a lot. So if you enjoy this, take a few minutes to leave a review. Word of mouth is key with podcasts, so share it with others. And if you really want to help make the magic happen, go find me at patreon.com. There's a tier called I Believe in You. And for just a couple of dollars a month, you can be an official roadie and help all the things I do. The podcast, the books, the classes, the videos keep on coming. This has been Corby Mitlide. And until next time, keep those ruby slippers polished and I'll meet you on the Psychic Yellow Brick Road. <laughs>